So I'm going to actually unpatch this. There we go. And I'm going to patch the output. Let's see. Right here. Out from there. And let's just see what it sounds like if I patch the different raw outputs into my switch. So I'm going to patch the 2790 into that one. And then I'm going to patch my 17. No, let me skip one. 1194 into input number two. Uh, I'm going to go 396 raw into uh, input three. And then I'm going to actually just use the regular BBD output uh, from the module, which will have our affected signal, because these are raw outputs, into number four. So that's going to be our little variety right there. But you can see that the light right here is sort of stationary at number four. So we're actually listening to what we just listened to. Uh, now the trick is to get this little guy to switch. Well, it just so happens that I have an A155 up at the very top. So if we move up just a little bit right here, right above this section, right up here somewhere, um, is the A155. And that's gonna be providing us the clock signal that I need to kind of switch through the outputs. So I'm gonna patch out from my clock out from my sequencer there. And we should hear a little bit of movement occur once I patch in the trigger in. There we go. And now you can see the lights sequentially moving down. So actually only when it hits there, it will be listening to that original car plus strong patch. Otherwise we're listening to raw outputs. Now if I wanted to, I could switch the number of steps here. Right now I'm on four, so it actually moves through four, uh, the four inputs. But if I flip it over here to three, it just goes through the first three. And there is more to that, but I just wanted to kind of go in a basic kind of configuration here so we can kind of get an idea of how, how else you can use this. Now, a switch is just one way you can use these outputs by patching them into it. Um, and what may actually be a better uh, utilization of this is to maybe plug some of these into effects of some sort, which I happen to have a few of those kind of hanging out right up here. Um, and we're going to actually use some of those, but I just kind of wanted to get the basic idea of what we're going to be patching. So basically one signal going into each one of these in the switch. So let me start that part now that we have that sort of going. Okay, so regular output of the BBD, I'm going to put in number one. So that's our one. And then I'm gonna go back to my A188-2 and I'm gonna take, let's say the 1726 and I'm gonna go straight up here into the top section and I'm going into my A188-1 and I'm gonna take the output of that and I'm gonna actually go into number two right there. So. And now I'm going to go back up to my A188-1 so I can kind of tweak what I want that second signal to sound like. And that's different enough that I kind of like it just so we get an idea. So one is a car plus patch coming from A188-2. This is a sound coming from the A188-1. Let's get a third sound going. So I'm going to take the 3328. And for this one, I am gonna go up as well. And I'm gonna go into my signal in here. Hopefully this will reach. There we go, perfect. Well, relatively perfect. Actually, I'm not really comfortable with the length of that cable, so I'm gonna unpatch that. Let's go a little bit longer of a cable. So I'm patching 3328 into signal in of my bit modifier up here. And then I'm gonna go from the output of my A189-1 into number three down here of my A151 sequential switch. And then now whatever sound I wanna set up on here I can. I mean, this has a lot of settings. And I basically just want something that's different enough that it's recognizable. 
There we go. Cool. All right. So now, if we go back to our 188-2 right here, um, let's kind of go through what we have so far. So output one is going into input number one of the A151. And then number two is actually bringing the output of the A188-1 up here in the top. Um, input number three of our switch is actually coming from the A189-1 bit modifier. And then number four is kind of blank right now, but we're gonna put something in that one as well. So let's take the 662 output from our tap VBD module. And I'm gonna go up into the input of A101-2. There we go, it's getting a little crowded up here. There we go. And now I'm gonna patch from that output on the A101-2 into number four of our switch. And then for this, I have to kind of listen a little closely. There we go. I'm up here at my A101-2 and I'm just kind of trying to find a nice little sound. So there we go. We got four different varieties of A188-2 going into the switch and we're just sending them all out to our mixer. So that's one way you could do this. Now, in the manual of this module, the A188-2, it also mentions some 5.1 uh, applications that you could do, and definitely you could do that. Um, you would have to have some kind of audio interface of some sort, mixer, so you could then feed them out into several different speakers and then get this little guy going. Um, just for kicks, why don't we go up and maybe adjust the tempo a little bit, because I want to kind of hear what that sounds like. So I'm going to bring the tempo of our sequence up a little bit. So you can see the lights are speeding up because the tempo is going really fast. And that's a little bit slower than what we had before. I'm going to change some of my patch here on my A188-1. And maybe change my A189-1. So now we definitely have some interesting variety going on. So four different flavors of tapped output, some raw coming from our BBD module here, and then some coming from just the regular output of this. So in essence, from this output, what we're really getting is, let's see, the 1194 is on, 396, a little negative component of the 662, so that's what we're hearing out the output one. But if I wanted to change that, I could just go in here and... I don't know that I would want to do that because I kind of wanted to have my control. But, you know, sky's the limit at this point. So far cry from what we started with. And I'm just adjusting the A188-1 again. A189-1. Okay. Now, 
one last thing I want to do is I kind of wanted to do maybe some voltage control or modulation in this patch. So um, for that, I'm just going to go up to this top section up here. There we go, right here. And I have my LFO kind of hanging out in the wings waiting to do some modulating here. So I'm going to take an output here. Let's do a sine wave. And I'm just going to go right into my BBD A188-1 up here. And I'm just going to adjust the delay clock here with a sine wave. Okay, pretty good. So let's take a different uh, waveform from the A147 up here. And let's go into something else. Let's go maybe into our A189-1 variable bitrate modifier. Let's go into bit crush here. Whoops. It. And now let's go triangle wave, of course my favorite on the A147, and let's actually just modulate our A101-2. So we're going to go, let's go into CV2. interesting modulations going on here. So let's bring up the speed of our modulating. And again, this is just experimental patching. You know, we could have used, uh, if I go back down to the A188-2, I could, you know, use any of the other individual raw outputs for this. Um, and I could just go right now and do one. Maybe change this up. This is, uh, let's see, the 1726. That one's actually going into our A188-1 up here. So don't patch that. Maybe go into the 1194. So tons and tons of possibilities. So let's just do a little review of what we've done so far. We talked about the external clock sync that you can accomplish with this. We talked a little bit about the external feedback in and what this is going to actually allow you to do. And then we did kind of a little demonstration of, you know, just one way you could use the individual raw outputs of your A188-2 tapped BBD module. Uh, you could feed each one of them out to different effects like I have up here, uh, or you could do something a little simpler, maybe send them over to a switch and then have that go into maybe a filter that you like, because uh, obviously since there are different taps down here at the A188-2, um, you will get a slightly different timbre. Um, in the manual for the A188-2, they actually give you a little bit more of a, uh, looks like a patch of, with a voltage controlled mixer. So tons of modulation capabilities there. Um, but again, you know, it's entirely up to you. And I actually really like the flexibility of this module here. Uh, because, you know, as you can see, you can do just tons and tons of different things. It's almost like its own self-contained little system right here. Um, especially when you start combining it with other modules and then getting some very interesting modulations. So, that is going to actually do it for us today. Um, I hope that this was fairly useful and this is going to actually be the last uh, video in this particular series. Um, I hate to be kind of like a tease with the A155 up here, uh, but uh, 
I do have good news. Uh, we will be kind of going into the A155, which is up here. I don't want you to see them quite yet, but we will be going into a little demonstration coming up fairly soon on the A155 and the A154 as well. So please, please stay tuned for that. Hope you found this useful and keep on patching out there.